<laughs> I'm all right, brother man. I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain, man. Yeah, you it's can't. Off? Yeah, I'm, I'm well, thank you. Um, just just trying to keep ticking over during these times, huh? Yeah, mate. You playing, and I, I I I don't know how you deal with it. I'm retired and I'm struggling. <laughs> it's hard work just being stuck in the house. I know, I know. I I I tell you what, uh, we don't we don't know how much football means to us. Oh, tell me about it. When you're stuck at home with the missus and the kids, <laughs> God damn, dude, I'm I'm like the black spider man. I'm climbing up. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, you miss it massively. Even watching it on on the television, even having the live games and stuff like. And I know, like now they, they they're putting up all all kinds of stuff, you know, like old yeah. old games. Like last night, I watched an old film, like Celtic Rangers. Yeah, and yeah. It doesn't feel the same because yeah, it feels like it's ancient. Yeah. <laughs> like. You know, oh yeah. man, it, it it is tough. So yeah, they better they better find a solution with this coronavirus <laughs> before before I'm gonna turn to domestic by <laughs> <laughs> You need to get out there, right? You need to get out there and and, and do some do some jogging. That's what I'm trying to do. Just do some jogging, and get some fresh air when I whenever I can. Yeah, so uh, you know, but it, it it helps for that. But you know, for that hour that you get to go out. Yeah, you take family walks and the yeah. kids go on the scooters and stuff. So yeah. it's good. But then you, when after the walk and then you get back into the house and then you're like, God damn, what's next? Yeah, uh, the same thing again. No, honestly, thank you so much for for, for joining me. I'm, I really, really appreciate it. No um, pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Uh, yeah. I was, I, I, I was, I was actually so glad that you asked me because I was <laughs> that bored of. of not having anything to do, so we're lost. I'm like, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> oh man, no, brilliant. So we're gonna we're gonna go through your career. So we're gonna take it way back, um, back to the start. So young, young pirates was your youth team, is that correct? Yeah, my 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 uncle. Um, I think he 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 played for Orlando Pirates, like the, yeah. the big team. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he had an accident, so he was told that. He's got not that much chances of turning back um, into a professional professional player again at the highest level. So yeah. then I think he played amateur football, and then he just him and and his brother then decided to start at their own club. You know, okay, so of, yeah. So that's why. So because he played for Pirates for yeah, Orlando yeah. Pirates, and then he just thought of listen, want to keep the team Pirates, but yeah. young Pirates because it's like an, a youth like youth team so it was myself and my brother and and just kids from the neighborhood and then we joined we started playing then yeah and obviously didn't know that it was it was in the family genes that yeah. I was meant to play football but yeah at the age of seven eight then you could already see you know that wow we were a bit a, a bit I'm um, not to blow my own trumpet but we were just a bit more special than the other kids like football yeah. was natural to us and then yeah. I think, yeah, it just grew from that. Oh, brilliant. So, so your first professional club at 18, uh, Seven Stars, but it was it was formed, you were the first crop of players, right? So it was formed in 1995. Yes, right. yes, yes. Yeah. I'm actually the guy that's my football agent. Um, okay. He used to have, he used to have um, a uh, um, magazine, like he used to own magazine company. And yeah. then um, he just thought he bought a small franchise and yeah. Then, yeah, when it loved football that much, and then he he started a football team like Seven Stars, like a community team. You yeah, know? And they sort of like recruit from all the different neighborhoods. They get two or three players so that you know if there's a player from from a certain neighborhood, then you yeah. get the people from that neighborhood to support the team. And oh, I think cool. that's how that's how the whole thing started up, and the fan base like all over Cape Town because we in most of the most of the neighborhoods in Cape Town surroundings where there was one or two players that was from that neighborhood. So you get a, a crop of people coming to support the team. So, yeah, so it was, it was good. And I think um, that's really where, where the real, the real McCoy started. Like people see that I was only, um, I was 17 at the time. I was 17 and then playing, yeah. playing with grown men. And I'm, I just made it look easy. And obviously, yeah. so um, all the all the big all the big clubs, Orlando Pirates, Kaiser Chiefs, they all started being interested. 
Yeah. But the manager, the coach that I had, um, he actually said to, to the owner, listen, you're going to let the kid waste his time here in South African football. You should, you should let him go abroad because he thinks that I've got what it takes mentally, um, yeah. physically, and I'm ready. I'm hungry for the opportunity. You should send him on trial in Europe and you yeah. won't regret it. And I think I went then with uh, South Africa in the 20s. They yeah, came that's to right. play. They came to play my team. I wasn't even selected for really? the national team. No, I wasn't selected, mate. <laughs> so the under the 20s were preparing to go to the African Nations Cup. Yeah. So, yeah, they went to the African Nations Cup and they... They, 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 they came to Cape Town because the climate to Morocco was very similar to Cape Town. So okay. they, they had their training camp in Cape Town. So they asked like the three professional clubs that was in Cape Town if they could play against their, their first teams or their reserve team down the 20s. Yeah. So our, we had a match. We had a match. But then the coach said, listen, I think just to give them a taste of their medicine for not selecting you for the team. I'm going to leave you out for this game and go and play with the under-19s. So yeah. he sent me down to go play with the under-19s against the national under-20 team. Yeah, yeah. So myself and another boy, you know, two first-team players, we went down and then we played with the under-19s against the national under-23. And we hammered them 5-1. <laughs> I, I scored all five goals. So the coach came and then asked, like, who I was. And then yeah. he said, um, nah, it's just a, just a kid from... Yeah, and they said, how did they, didn't, how did they never selected me? Then, you know, and if this is, like, the best, the best kids in the country and here's yeah. a guy who's hammering... The national team that they weren't even selected from so and then they asked my age and i was obviously like 16 turning 17 so yeah. i was eligible eligible to play at the on the 20 side yeah and, yeah and then they drafted me into the side and <laughs> two weeks later the african nations cup um, oh, your, your and that, and yeah, and that was my fortune change. And because at that at that African Nations Cup, we got to the final. You're frozen, Benny. Benny, your picture's frozen. Really? Your your signal, yeah, your signal bad. Um, maybe let, let me just move and see. You know, better. Uh, a little bit better, yeah. You look like a, 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 a one of the first TVs that are out. All the pixels. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm I'm ancient, but I'm I'm trying to keep up with you know with, with modern day stuff, so so that I don't I, I don't get left behind in life, mate. Is that better? Yeah, it's a bit better. Yeah, it's a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the signal is strong, then. Yeah. So yeah. So then um. So then I went. Then I went in a tournament and. South Africa ended up in the final of the of the under twenty World um, African Nations Cup. Yeah, and unfortunately we lost to the host Egypt. I missed the final, two yellow cards for taking off my shirt celebration. <laughs> but oh, I got no. player of the tournament and top goal wow. scorer. And I think yeah, when you get when at these tournaments, you know you've got all the scouts and everything. And and I was scouted up and then I had everywhere, but obviously I had just won the Champions League yeah. that year. That year. So for, for, for me as a, as a kid, you get an opportunity to go to all those clubs. And the, yeah. first thing in your, the freshest club in your mind is the, the club that just won the Champions League where 19-year-old Patrick Kluivert scored the, the winning goal. So you think to yourself, mate, maybe this is, this is a sign that, that that might be me. Yeah, you can be next to him. Listen, I don't want to hear about this club or that club just take me to Ajax. Yeah. Champions League winners, and I want to go. I want to go to Ajax first, and I want to try my luck there. And, and Were there a lot of clubs interested at that point? Um, yeah, I had. Um, I was. I could have gone Real Madrid, Barcelona, wow. Monaco, PSG, Feyenoord, Napoli, oh. AC Milan. Like, I mean, I'm, when I'm talking about all the top clubs in Europe. Yeah. Club. They were at the tournament and I could have gone there, but obviously I, I, I chose Ajax and and because of them, it, it was also a little bit easy for me to adapt 
because you know, first time for a kid from Africa, so you leave Africa for the first time. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Italy, where yeah. the language barrier is completely different, and nobody speaks English. Yeah. yeah. Or Spain, and that's so why I wanted to go to a country where majority of the people second language is English, so that it's not a struggle for me to adapt with the language and that people can help you. So that's why IX was my was my was my first choice because people that, that, that English was very good language to them. And yes. South Africa having adopted the Dutch like Afrikaans and that was my language that I spoke at home. So it was quite similar for me and it's easier for me to adapt in Holland than in Spain or Italy or France. Yes. You know, so so I, I chose IX and when I got there they were very keen. They didn't want me to trial and that. They were just happy to sign me because they knew of all the interest that was that was there for me. So imagine asking me to come for the four-day trial. And then I just said, okay, see you, mate. Thank you very much. So, yeah, so they, just, they just signed me up based yeah. on, on, on the tournament. And, and that's where my European journey began. Yeah, so you went there. You went to Ajax. You scored nine goals in your first season. Is that right? And you won the league. Yeah, well, I wasn't. I wasn't really supposed to play in the first team. Yeah, um, of course. We had a few. I was. I was draft, I was in the A ones with the reserve team, the youth team. You know, so obviously. Ben, is your hand on the speaker? Is your hand on the? Oh, that's probably why. That's, that's probably. That, why. That. Sorry, mate. <laughs> that's um, all right. So then, so so then, um, the first team had a few injuries. A few injuries. Some two strikers got injured, so we only had the the one striker. That ended up playing at Rangers, Sota Sota Arvelazzi. Yeah, yeah. He used to play for Rangers. Um, so he was the only recognized striker there was. So then the manager said, Listen, we need we need um some of the youth players to come up because there's a shortage and strikers. So obviously I was doing really well in the in the youth team. So they pulled me up to the first team and then I had a couple of training sessions with them and then the manager said, "Listen, I think he's good enough to play in the first team, and then that's how I started. I started getting my opportunity and getting in, and coming on as a substitute almost every single game, and then every time coming on and scoring. So, so yeah, it worked out pretty well for me. And Ajax finished up champions within my first season. We won the yeah. league, you know. So that was that was that was um, quite special." Was was it strange for you, like you say, being a young boy from South Africa? You know, you you weren't selected for the the under twenty team. All of a sudden, you've been selected. You've gone away to the tournament. You finished as top goal scorer, um, player of the tournament. You then moved to Ajax, and like you said, you weren't meant to play in the first team. And then all of a sudden, you're thrown in. Did you have any fear at that age, or did you just think, I, I can do this? No, obviously. Um, at first, at first, I thought, you know what? Um, I was such an unlucky guy because it wasn't. I wasn't selected based because people thought I was talented or there was something there. It was yeah. always by default. Um, the under-20s only came to camp in Cape Town and then they asked to play our team. And that's how I yeah. got selected because yeah. I was better than them, you know? So it was like almost like somebody just didn't want me to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so I had to go via the long route to get there. But in the end, that was my destiny, you know. I've, uh, where where I was from in Cape Town, it's it's tough. It's yeah. really tough, you know. It's a tough part of of Cape Town, like gangs and a lot of violence, and you know. So, so the life the life that I had where I was growing up, compared to making it in Europe, any obstacle is absolutely nothing compared to how I grew up, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, um, the obstacles that, that I faced in life. So, so yeah, so I just wanted the opportunity to show that, you know what, I might be from Africa, but I think I'm better than, than a lot of, a, a lot of the, the, the youth players that they have there. And, and this is an opportunity for me to shine and, and for me to make, to make a better life for myself so I can take care of my family back home. No, of course. And, and obviously, as, as a player, I hear a lot about Ajax and I'm interested in coaching and you hear a lot about their youth system and their coaching system. What was it like? Because you played with people like Yari Littman was there and stuff, wasn't he? You played with Evander Saar was there, like some real like top, top players. What was it like? No, you know, like, 
I think it's a dream for any young. It's a dream for any young player. Like you go there, you've got those top, top, top professionals, like guys who, who eat, sleep, breathe football. You know, yeah. and, um, and everything else is, is a second life. Football is everything. The De Boer brothers, like the most, the most professional guys that you can ever come across but really? the toughest guys on the planet like these guys <laughs> they are compared to the, the two twin brothers they when they when they're up against each other it's it's brutal it's really brutal it's brutal that goes on <laughs> so you we as a kid i used to see this and i was like oh my god like two brothers and pure hacking each other in trainings and yeah no one don't want to lose to the other one and all the teammates you getting it if 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 what if if his team is is behind yeah and yeah the teammates you getting and and if you're a young player like myself i was just hiding behind people because <laughs> i didn't want i didn't want the bollocking because yeah. you know like they give you the ball and then maybe you pass him the ball a little bit too soft yeah does it you know so i was just i was just hiding when the team wins I'm first one in the celebration, but for the games, I, I just try and hide and stay out their way and, and let them battle it out. So I think that that mentality that I picked up there, you know, that, that yeah. for them, everything, everything, everything they did was was to win. They, yeah, just, they were born winners, you know. So so slowly but surely, I started picking up these little trades, and I think, okay, if you want to make it, if you want to be this kind of player, then that's the that's the mentality, that's the attitude that you gotta that you gotta that you gotta pick up, and then and that's what you, yeah. that's what you gotta adapt, you know, to to make it to make it wherever you want, especially from Africa. People just yeah. think, ah, you know, we Africans, we only do it because we want to look after our family, not we do it because we are naturally talented and we, we, we've got that passion for the game, you know? Yeah. So, so I wanted to change people's perspective of how they look at African players. Of course. And so in your second season, um, you scored uh, 11 goals. So again, like you say, you weren't mentally, you're still a young boy at this point, but to score nine in your first season and win the league, you scored 11 in your second goal, which ended up being your last season at Ajax. At the end of that season, being a young boy and, you know, having the two seasons that you've had, did you kind of know, Benny, you're, you're going to move again kind of thing? No, you know, like, um, I think um, my, my, my stay at Ajax came a little bit, I think, too early for me. Yeah. Um, I, I, still, I still wanted to stay. I think mm -hmm. I, I needed just that extra year just to grow and just to... You know, now I'm ready for. Um, I was ready for Europe, but then unfortunately, um, the, the the manager left, um, yeah. Morten Olsen, the Danish manager, and then they brought in um, a Dutch manager, a guy called Jan Wouters, like typical, like typical Dutch and Dutch yeah. mentality, <laughs> and he came in, and I think because Ajax had such. Um, a, a wide variety of all kinds of players, people, players from all over the world, South America, you know, we had Brazilians, we had South Africans, we had Nigerians, we had like, you know, um, yeah. Puerto Ricans, Portuguese. So we were like very spread, spread across and yeah. he came in and he wanted to change that culture and he wanted to make Ajax Dutch again because yeah. he said it's sort of like the Dutch mentality, the Dutch heritage was a bit, lost with the previous manager being a Danish manager and not Dutch. So then yeah. he wanted to bring in more Dutch players and that. So I think a lot of the foreign players were, the guns were aimed at, at us yeah. to be the first <laughs> ones to leave, you know? So, so yeah, and, and, and there was one pointing at me too. But yeah. he, 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 came, he came to me and he spoke and he says, listen, I, I, was really, I was very loved by the fans. The club, everybody liked me, they loved um, the way I was, my mentality, my mindset. I was young, but you know, I was the important player to the club. But he says he wants to he wants to go with 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 with, with a Dutch with Dutch striker. Yeah, so I'll probably be number three in that. But I fought my way into the side, so I can stay. Or if I want to leave, I can leave. And I said, no, I want to stay. Of course, I want to fight for my place because Amsterdam became sort of my home. You yeah, know, away yeah. from home. <clears throat> And then obviously, so I think um, the message that they took across to my agent 
was mm -hmm. different to the message that they they came across to me that listen um if Benny stays here he's not going to play so the club had an uh, a nice opportunity for him there was a chance that he might go Tottenham Hotspur so it interested him but Celta Vigo offered him a lot of money to take Benny off their hands and yeah. they think it's a great opportunity for him to go and try Spanish football and all that but the manager said I can fight for my place but my agent was told like if I stay I ain't gonna play not playing. yeah of course yeah so then he was trying to convince me to move on and I said no I want to fight for my place and he said listen are you sure you don't want to you don't want to pass up on an opportunity like this because Spain La Liga yeah. is, is, is is the the league at the moment in, in Europe you know like Valencia, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Champions League semi-finalists, finalists, back yeah. to back, you know, two Spanish yeah. teams in the final. So Spanish football is dominating. So it's a great opportunity for you to go. And I said, nah, I'm happy here. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't rush me. You know, I'm, I still need that crowd. And then he says, listen, Ken, you know, I'm always going to be honest with you. The manager was just being nice. But that gun ain't pointing at you. That gun is right at your head. It's, they're ready to pull the trigger. So if I'm like, I don't want to say to you that I don't think that you're good enough to fight, but I just think mm. from the way they put it, whether you're good enough, whether you're better than the guys, they want Dutch players to play ahead. So yeah. you ain't gonna you ain't gonna get into the side. You know, so yeah. it's best to take to cut our losses, like you've had two great mm. Yeah, two great years at Ajax, great experience, and I think you're ready now to to move on. So for me, it was not a question where I really wanted to leave. Yeah, yeah, that you're kind and of forced. Then, yeah, so I was basically forced out. So then, yeah, and then he, he he made me choose Spain because, you know, like of the glamour of the league, but he yeah. didn't tell me that the bloody language is going to be a huge issue for me. <laughs> You know, yeah, he, yeah. He, he talks about all oh, the lifestyle you play at nine o'clock at night because it's so hot and the yeah. weather, like the life is unbelievable and, and the beautiful beaches and, and the players that plays in Spain and the clubs that you're going to play against and all that. And the money is massive. It's like, that was the difference between Spain and Holland. Like when I moved from Ajax, yeah. um, you just go completely different scale. It's like, you earn four yeah. times as much as what you've earned there. Like, yeah. I was earning what I earned when I moved from Ajax to Spain. I was yeah. earning more money than what the top players at Ajax were earning. The De Boer wow. brothers. The, yeah. So, that was the difference of the two leagues, you know? Spanish yeah. football was a much higher caliber to to Dutch football in terms of yeah. money-wise, um, commercial-wise, and obviously exposure to the league but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you went to you went to so end up signing for Celta Vigo was it a different pressure on you again because obviously the first move to Ajax you were seen as a young South African boy unknown quantity basically but now you're going to Celta Vigo with a reputation of okay this this boy is basically the real deal but obviously you went to Celta Vigo and it seemed that the manager didn't fancy you from the start you didn't really get a chance there did you no no but only at the left, only later I found out that I wasn't the manager did the manager wasn't the one that brought me in. The technical right. director was the one who, who persuaded because he's a massive he's a big lover of, of Dutch football and he yeah. loves Ajax Amsterdam and what the club built, so he thinks if a player comes from Ajax, he'll make it anywhere in the world. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Because the, the Ajax style of football suits most most clubs. Barcelona, yeah. like they Barcelona have adapted the Ajax way, not other way around. Yeah. You know? yeah so yeah. he he was a he was a massive big lover of, of, of Dutch football and he persuaded the club to push for me. He said he's a right. young player and he's the next big thing. He's the next yeah. big thing. If if we manage him correctly, if we if we patience, we have patience with him. Um, we groom him properly. We don't just think, okay, he's going to be the savior. So then they they made it happen. So when the manager asked for a striker, and the manager gave them the list, and yeah. they just scrapped the list, and they've gone for me because I came from Ajax. So yeah. straight away, straight away from the off when I came in, 
the manager mm -hmm. was like, okay, where's the players that I wanted? Where's this one? Where's that one? Yeah, where's yeah, of one? course. So, and then the sporting nurses and we got you something better. Which, yeah, yeah. Which I probably was. Yeah. But at the time, like, the manager didn't want to speak English. He didn't want to, listen, I, I, don't understand, I don't understand your language. You came into my team. So he yeah. speaks, he rattles in Spanish like 100 miles an hour. And I'm thinking like, God damn, what is this clown saying, man? I'm yeah. like, and I'm just shaking man. like, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And then I'm asking Claude Makalele. Yeah. Claude Makalele, he was, he was French, fr um, French at, at Santa Vigo. Also, another brother, <laughs> no English, nothing, <laughs> nothing. So two Africans, I'm thinking, hey, I'm, I'm keeping close to this brother because yeah. he, he looks like me. Yeah. He's a bit like me, like we're both the same, you know, so at least we yeah. can stick together. So I've got like, hey, I've got at least someone that I can relate to in the team. Yeah. And this brother, no, 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 no. No, 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 English. no, 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 so I didn't understand what the manager said. And yeah. nobody, nobody in the team, nobody could speak English. Wow. So how, how did you find that, like, in terms of training, Good. in terms of matches? like? At first, I got hmm. myself a dictionary. So I was, I, I trained with a dictionary in my pocket. <laughs> oh, dude. If, 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 if you just look at now, that's why you can see now, modern day yeah. football, you know, players have interpreters and managers, mm -hmm. you know, they get, they make sure that the players are comfortable when they come into, there's no language barrier. Back in the yeah. days, back in the olden days, I, I, I might even put it because that's really what it was. I had nothing. I had to find yeah. my own way. I was getting paid a lot of money and I had to make a way, you know. So I looked on, looked on the internet for somebody to come yeah. and to me and, you know, they can speak English and difficult to find because Vigo was a village. It was yeah, not yeah. like a big major city. It was yeah. like a small town. So people don't really go out to the big cities and that, you know, so everybody yeah. just speaks Spanish, plain simple and like yeah. pigeon, like street yeah. English. Hey, how are you? Everything good and blah, you know, and that's it. Yeah. That's so yeah, got. so I was, I, I was pretty buggered. And I think that's really um, stopped me in my tracks. Because yeah. the football side, I basically had to do my own thing. I, yeah, I'm yeah. just assuming, hey, the team is doing that. So that's what I have to do. So I'm trying to anticipate what, what, what players were doing and, and that. So in the preseason, in the preseason, preseason got off to a flyer. I was on fire, mate, because obviously I need to prove a point to these yeah. guys. Said, yeah, we might not speak the same language, but with the ball at my feet, it's a completely different story. <laughs> you know, so preseason was, was brilliant. So then people's like, wow, this guy understands us and that. But yeah, when the league, when the real, when the real football started, oh my God, like what the language barrier was a, the biggest problem I've ever faced. I've never, like, that was like from the first time in my career, in my life, where I cried because yeah. I thought like there was no way out for me. I signed a five-year contract. Yeah. So I was stuck. I was stuck here. Yeah? And I said, <laughs> dude, I wanted to fight for my place at Ajax. And my agent was going to put some decent dough in his pocket. Yeah. He me to Spain. And then he's sitting... When he's telling me nice life and then I'm reading dictionaries here to try and understand what people are saying to me and you know, so life it yeah. was it was horrendous, it was horrible. Like it was it was the toughest time I've ever faced in my career. Yeah, so then from there you, you went on loan to Porto. So did you say to your agent, listen, I need to get out of here on loan, regardless to where it is? Yeah, or... regardless. I, I just I just wanted to play football and I wanted to people to understand me, you know. So yes, yeah. I all of a sudden I became a I became a rubbish player overnight because yeah. I didn't understand the language, I didn't understand the culture, and obviously and and I know now we now we've got this whole big campaigners going. There was no campaigners there. Then yeah. if you're black, you're black, they discriminate against you and nobody gives a damn. You know, yeah. so it yeah. was tough. So black players, like now, mm -hmm. black players have, have, have a voice.
Back then, yeah. you didn't have a voice. You know, yeah. you just take what you get. And, and obviously, people called you all kinds of things. And, yeah. you just, and they don't understand that I was just a 20-year-old kid. You know, yeah, that, of course, yeah. that's a million Trying miles away from Africa. Not that I was looking for sympathy or anything, but people didn't want to understand, like, the obstacles that I was going through. I, I, I don't understand the coach. He doesn't want to make me understand him either. You know, yeah, yeah, wants, of course. He wanted, so he wanted the first thing he wanted, the players that he wanted. And then eventually yeah. when the club gave him that, and I was just pushed to the side and, you know, like, yeah. good luck to the African you know, in yeah. kind of way. So eventually, me being me, I'm showing that I'm gonna show you I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay afloat and I'm gonna I'm gonna fight it out. And I fought, I fought, you know, and then yeah. eventually I learned to speak Spanish eight months, mm -hmm. nine months later, almost yeah. the, the, the whole season. And um with me now being able to speak Spanish, being communicate, I think things became a little bit easier and I think I got more respect for my teammates then because, you know, he's tried, he's made an effort. He's trying, yeah, of course. Hard. So then everybody's opinion about me changed completely. Everybody yeah. loved me. And they couldn't yeah. understand now. Now I was fitting in how I was supposed to when they bought me, you yeah. know. But the coach just the coach just wasn't having it. He was he's just... He, 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 he came in and he didn't speak Spanish first straight away. He didn't understand what I want. And that yeah. one season has passed and he's moved on now. So yeah. I am where I am. So I he ain't changing nothing for me now that everything is fine. So that was okay. So I, I, I accepted and understood. But I still just worked hard for myself then because I know, you know, yeah. uh, my family and I've got so many people depending on me. So I need to work. I'm, work, I, work I work it. And then Porto came along. Lucky. Were you happy? Um, at first, I didn't know who they were. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I genuinely didn't know who they were. And then they yeah. said, oh, Portuguese league and that. And I said, okay, Portuguese league. If there's a league, it's okay. I'll go. I'll yeah. go. I just wanted to get out. And I just wanted to feel like, you know, I wasn't just the only black guy there anymore, you know, because Kurt yeah. Makalele moved on. Real, yeah. Madrid, Real Madrid bought him. Mm -hmm. um, and then he moved, so yeah, the color regime around me just missing yeah. action. So I said, "Listen, I can't be the only one here. I need to move on as well." You know, yeah. so I went to Porto, and when I got to Porto, um, there was a few Brazilians. So yeah. there's a few that looks like me. So okay, yeah. like adaptability would be a bit easier, and, and everyone was nice, and everyone was friendly, and and yeah. majority of the people could speak English. And I yeah. think that helped, you know. But now that I could speak Spanish, so mm -hmm. Portuguese wasn't far off. So I adapted straight away. And then um, the manager, the manager, new manager also just came in. Yeah, Mourinho. Young, yeah, young guy, yeah. young guy. And he came and he came and he says to me, listen, I know, I know about you. I watched you. I watched you play. And I think you're absolutely unbelievable. You're going to be my player. You're going to be my player. Yeah. And we're gonna kill this league, you know. So wow. when a guy when a guy said that to you, and I'm thinking, I'm saying, yeah. okay, I didn't know much about the team, but the club, yeah. the league, and that. But uh, for me, I felt like somebody there's there's someone who cares about me, someone that's different, but who yeah. cares about me, and you know. So I need to go out, I need to go out and 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 kill for this guy. Yeah. So like you said, him being a young manager, you being a young player, going there. Did he? Did, could you tell instantly that this guy was gonna go on and be a success as a manager? Did he have that? Or was he called himself the special and that special uh, aura about him? He was unbelievable. He was more than special. He was more really? than special. Like I, I, I would, I would, I would have literally ran through a brick wall for this guy wow, because yeah. for the first time, even in Ajax, when I was at my best, when I was, I was so loved by the fans by my teammates, by the players, by the club, you know. Mm -hmm. Never has a manager made me feel the way, the way Mourinho, the way this guy, he, he was like, you know, the father that I never had when I came yeah. to him. You know, like, yeah. I was in Europe for, I think it was my six, I was six years in Europe, or five years, yeah. I can't recall, but five years in Europe, and it was the first time 
a guy, a manager, a coach, or uh, a club official of that matter put their, their, their hands around you and says to your son, you're going to kill it. You've got mad skills, mad talent. This team is going to be built around you, not other way around. Wow. And for I me, mean, that's, that's, what I, that's what I needed to hear. And of I course. Just, I went into beast mode. Well, it worked, didn't it? Because you scored, you scored 12 goals in 11 I, games. I literally, I went, I went into beast mode. Like, what they didn't want at Celta Vigo, Porto was going to benefit of all that now. So, yeah. so I, went, I went to work. And yeah. in trainings, I think the players, the players would just stand still and look and have a conversation saying, how, how did this guy, how did this dude not play? And he says, and they, no, no, they were like, literally like, boys, we, we're winning this league. Now. We're winning. Now we've, we've got a club. You know, I was, I was, I was greedy. I yeah, was yeah. greedy to play football, you know, yeah. and, and, and they loved that. And, and yeah, the goals were coming and the teams were, we were happy because Porto was in ninth, in ninth place when I joined them. Yeah, ninth, yeah, yeah. Eighth or ninth. They were like far down, like was the lowest they've ever been in their career. Like, yeah. From existence. And then, yeah, we just went up the ladder and, you know, so fortunately for us, we, finished, we ended up third on the league. So we yeah. qualified for Europa League. And yep. then because of me doing so well, Celta Vigo recalled me. And yeah, I said, yeah. I ain't going back. I'd rather shoot myself in the foot or yeah. my football career finished, but I ain't going back. Yeah. So then there was the whole dispute. Porto couldn't pay couldn't the money that they wanted, that yeah. Celta wanted. And yeah, unfortunately for me, they my, yeah, they my parent club, so I had to go back and I went back with a heavy heart. I hated him. I hated yeah. him. They yeah. were saying I was, I was negro this, negro that, negro yeah. that. And I said, fuck off. I ain't going back. I'm sorry yeah, for yeah. the language, but yeah. I ain't going yeah. back. Leave me here with my people. You happy stay there in Spain. I don't want to be around those racist bastards. I just wanted to yeah. be here where I was loved, where I was, you know, part of something. Of course, of course. But it took and you then, back and Another must, year wasted. Another yeah, year wasted. Yeah, about to say because he didn't take you back and then give you the whole season no, to run a game. He took no. you back and you were in the same position as if you hadn't gone on loan to Porto. Yes. So it, it made no sense. So for me, I, I, I thought I thought it was maybe a bit of spite. They wanted to. Yeah. They wanted to spite me because, like, okay, he failed. He failed here. Yeah. And he's gone there and he's unbelievable. Now they want him back and then they want to teach me a lesson. You know, for succeeding across the across the border. Yeah. So yeah, I went back and then obviously the the, the 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 manager he played me all the Europa League games. So the Europa yeah. Cup games I was playing, but the league, the Spanish Cup, nothing. I yeah. I wasn't getting only when the team's in trouble, then yeah. it brings me on to try and bail them out. So yeah. I, I managed to bag a couple of goals there, scored some yeah. important goals, but you know, I wasn't happy and I was every Every weekend I was in Porto. Yeah. Every weekend I was in Porto and I was going for dinner with, with Jose. So we had yeah. a really good relationship. And yeah. he, he kept in touch with me. So I, I went to visit and I went to watch Porto games all the time, you know. So I just kept yeah. kept my my interest that, you know, I was a, still a still Porto part of player that's, yeah, of course. that's wearing a Salta Vigo shirt. So yeah. then when the time comes, uh, Porto sold Helder Postiga to Spurs. Us, yeah, um, yeah. And they, they got some big money and then they won the mm -hmm. league. So, you know, the money that they were getting for the Champions League. So they had now enough money to to give um, sell the half of what they wanted from me. Obviously, yeah. Because I went there and I didn't play for almost a whole season. Yeah. And then I came back. So when the prodigal son returns to Porto, <laughs> so it was like I, it was like I never left it was so, like but they paid eight million pounds for you. So, did you not have that pressure? Because obviously, when you were at Celta Vigo and you went back for that season and you weren't playing, mm -hmm. Porto actually went on to win the UEFA Cup, didn't they? They beat Celtic in the in the Europa League. So I was like, yeah, and I was like, like, yeah, of course. Bastards, they do it well, so I'm never gonna get there. Like, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, they were gonna be shit after um, after I leave. Gone, but they and went then they got on to win the league to, to win the league. And the Europa League, and I said, "Oh, I'm stuck here with these Spaniards, and now those Portuguese yeah. are moving without me." But because obviously, and and obviously the, the manager like Mourinho, 
he kept on saying, you're going to be my player. Don't worry, you're going to be my player. And then yeah. he, told me, he told me something that freaked me out. Yeah. And I was almost tempted to say, no, it's okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll stay at Celta. He, <laughs> says, he, he said to me, he says to me, nah, okay. I've sold Helder, I've sold Postiga, I've got the money, I'm bringing you in. We're winning the Champions League. So I, 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 I <laughs> winning the Champions League, Mr. I said, hey, Europa League is Europa League. The Champions League is Champions League. He says, no, I says, I looked at my puzzle. He said, I looked at my puzzle and there was one piece missing. And that piece has now arrived. So I'm putting it in. We're winning the Champions League. Wow. So you owe me. And I said to myself, oh, my God, like, this, this is massive. This guy is arrogant, yeah, but, but so confident and that. And then preseason started. I, I looked at the team, and I was like, so now he brought in, he brought in a, few, a few new faces, a few, and then I came in. And yeah. the, the, the team just looked like, we didn't look like no ordinary team. Oh, yeah. we most definitely didn't look like a team that was playing in the Portuguese league. Let yeah, me put yeah. it that way. We, on, we were unbelievable, mate. And wow. there, I, I said to myself, you know what? This guy, he might be onto something here. Maybe a, bit, a, step, a, bit, a, a step a bit too far about the Champions yeah. League winning it. But yeah. we'll, we'll get close to, to there because I can't see many teams. Many yeah. teams running us over. Maybe your Real Madrid's. Yeah. Um, Barcelona at the time, AC yeah. Milan, those teams. Yeah. And that's about it. English teams? No. Even yeah. as big as they were financially and that, but Man United, maybe. Man United yeah. with the names that they've got, like we were a bit scared of them. But yeah. Chelsea, Liverpool, um, no, nah, we, we, we weren't that bothered. We were like any team, we were ready for it. So. We got the season going and we started off with a fly in. And me yeah. straight in, straight in, goals galore, goals. And I was just, we were just going. The group stages, and we got Real Madrid, we got Marseille. Yeah. And against Marseille, we just, we just, we just sat after the game in the dressing room, you know, so we beat Marseille. Yeah. We, we beat Marseille, so we come in the dressing room. So now, you know, Mourinho is going to give a team talk. He's going to give a team talk, so... And he says, he says, he says, oh my God, oh my God, I've never, I've never seen anything like that. So we look and then George Costa, the captain says, what do you mean you've never seen anything like that? We, Benny do that every week. He's like, no, no, my friend, I've never seen Benny drag you on the floor in training sessions every single day. <laughs> Drogba took our defense <laughs> apart. He said, "Like it wasn't, it wasn't a racist comment." You frozen, you frozen, Benny. You frozen. Better? Yeah, I can, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. It's still a bit fuzzy, but I can hear you. It's fine. Um. So then, Mourinho. So Mourinho came out. Mourinho came out, and he says, "He says, nah, I've, I, I haven't seen anything like that." And he says. This, this is nothing racist. Nothing racist about yeah. that. Today, we were, up, we were up against a silverback gorilla. Yeah. So everybody's laughing. So I looked and I said, so obviously, you know, like, <laughs> when you say something like that, like, obviously, the yeah. black players are always the ones to look like, hey, is that like, you know? And then yeah. he, says, he says, we've got a baby silverback. We got a baby silverback, but today we were up against the father. He said, this guy is mean. He said, Benny, Benny, I want, I want you to get like that big. I said, Mister, even if I try, I cannot be that. I said, I don't know what they feed them there in Ivory Coast. Like, I said, I know Africa. I know Africa. South Africa are spoiled. Yeah. The West, the West Africans, West Africans, they eat rocks and natural dust. They they born with a twelve pack, so that is you no, know, that is just nature's there. You can't you can't touch that. That's natural. That's nature yeah. given. So then he said, he said, Oh my god, I've never seen anything in my life like that. And he said, I, I want that guy. I want that guy. He said, I want that guy. I said, Imagine. 
I have I have father and son. The 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 he says I have the king King Kong, and then I have yes. his, his 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 helper. You know the baby silver back, yeah. meaning me and Drogba in the same team. He said, "I will tear European football apart with these two players." <laughs> and 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 by then we sort of knew. I said, "It's a matter of time if 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 he stays in one more season, Drogba yeah. will either come in. Drogba, Drogba is the player that he wants to sign next." Yeah. You know. So then we went on and we had an amazing run, won the league. Um, yeah. Played in the Portuguese final three days before the Champions League, um, winning one. No, we thought we were cruising. We 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 save ourselves now for the Champions League final, and then boom, Benfica came back, hammered us. We lost yeah. the Portuguese final, but our focus was on the Champions League, you know. So, and then we said, okay, come Wednesday, we're ready for it. Gunning Champions League is ours. And then when yeah, did you yeah. start to believe, Benny? You see, like going through the Champions League like stages. When did you actually start to believe? I know he said it to you at the start, but when did you believe that? You know what? We could actually win this. I know. You, I remember you scored two goals against Man United. Um, the Man United, the, the Man there. United game. I think um, because we drew, we drew at Real Madrid. We drew at yeah. Real Madrid, and and we ran them over. We ran, yeah. we yeah. ran them over, and we were like, oh, "Wow, dude." They had like they had Zidane, they had top players, you know, yeah. Bex, Ronaldo, and we we ran them over, and we managed to get a draw. We drew one one with them, mm -hmm. so we finished second in our group. We finished second, but one point or two points difference between us and and Madrid. So Madrid won the won the group. We finished second. So then you know the day before the day of the draw, you know we we are training and then. We say, okay, who do we want? So you know, we we all stand in there. But when it comes, uh, Deco, who do you want to play? Who do you want? Uh, <laughs> most most of the players were going for the small teams because yeah, you want the easy passage. Yeah, of course, easy At route. Least yeah. If you, get, if you get to the quarterfinals, semifinals, you can boast. Hey, we yeah. been the quarterfinals. Where you been? Did you even play Champions League? So shut up. <laughs> you know, so you want you wanted that bragging, right? So if you get the smaller teams, um, you know, your they're the Eastern European teams like yeah, um, Ludogrets or those kind of teams you wanted. Yeah, and man, I said to me, and I said, ah, me, I want a small team, easy, easy means I want to score another goal or two, you know, <laughs> because I know when you get the tough guns, the goals dry up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you want small fish that you can You froze again, Benny. Yeah, I can see now. You back? Yeah, I'm back, yeah, yeah. Um so then he said he said to us, you know who I want? And we all eh, said, I want I want Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. There we point, we prove our point. Then people will know that we see this. So we all just looked and said, "Good luck playing Man United. We want small teams." And then, about five minutes later, the dude come running out. Oh my god! Oh my god! We drew Man United. We said, "This guy, man, these Portuguese are just as witch doctors. Like they talk Africans. They use these shangomas and these voodoo. And 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 this guy talks before the time. He say he wants Man United, and then we get Man United. Like so, we were we were pissed off because we thought our Champions League run's gonna come to an end because yeah, they, yeah. they are powerhouse in Europe. And then only after the first game, so." We go out. We go out there and we spank them. We spank yeah. them in Porto. We should have. We should have actually given them more than two. We were unbelievable that game. Not because I scored two goals, but you know we as a yeah. team, like the the last team I seen played played Man United off the park like that was Real Madrid when they went to Old Trafford and they and Ronaldo scored a hat trick. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. That was the last time I see. A team do that to Man United. What we did, and we just we just gave them a football lesson. Everybody yeah. broke themselves, and then we won two one. 
And Mourinho says, guys, do you believe me now? And then we started saying, mm, okay, it's the year. We're starting to see something. We, we, got, a, we got a good win something in our team. So yeah, good, good, good. You keep believing. You keep giving us, a, you know, stir that pot there, stir that pot so we can yeah. see how far we can go. And then Old Trafford, what, what an experience. What an experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we went to Old Trafford and... We should have actually lost the game. The referee, yeah. we got an opportunity, we got a goal technology by then, wasn't in yet. Yeah. Uh, Colsey got ruled offside, which if you look at it properly, it wasn't offside. It was, he was in line, so the goal yeah. should have stood. You know, so that goal got ruled out and then we got another opportunity. So in the 89th minute, so by that we had about eight, eight free kicks in that game. So it's yeah. usually myself and Deco who takes. So Deco takes everything. Deco, you know, these Brazilians, some players are just greed by, by nature. Yeah, yeah. No, they're just fucking greedy, man. <laughs> and Deco wants to take everything. And he's like, no, 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 you'll take the next one. Then it's even more closer to the goals. And he's like, nah, nah I can see my name. I can see I'm going to put top on The next one, you'll get. So we went like at eight. Eight free kicks afterwards, I just said, I'll piss off. So I'm standing there, and it's 89th minute, and I see Mourinho come off the bench, and he's shouting my name, Benny, Benny, Benny. But the noise levels, you couldn't hear anything. You couldn't yeah. hear anything. So he shouts the captain to George Costa. He said, George, he said, George, tell that Benny to tell Deco to piss off. <laughs> He's killed, he's killed enough birds because he's got about three or four over, over the crossbar into the stand and killed, like, you know, these birds that <laughs> sit up there by the, by the floodlights and that. Yeah. And he said he's killed enough of them now. He must bugger off. Benny, take the free kick. So then George comes running. You know, George comes running and he's a scary figure. And he grabs Deco and he says to Deco, hey, Mr. Say, you must piss off. Benny, you, you take the free kick. So I said, ah, Deco wants to take everything. Let him take it. So yeah. then he says, hey, you go tell Mr. I told you. And then you tell me. You said, Deco must take it. So then he said, you take it afterwards. You go tell him. You should have let Deco take it. So then I said, okay, I take the damn free kick. So now I was like, work up, you know, and I thought, hey, this is it for us. Yeah. And I said, imagine, imagine putting one top corner, the whole of South Africa is going to go, this is, this is my moment, this is the moment that I was, I was put on this earth for, you know. Yeah. You killed Man United, you were an instant, you were an instant hero, you were a yeah. superstar, yeah. you are the man. English teams are coming to knock on your door now, my friend. So that, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm busy putting in the ball and all these things are going through my head, you know? I'm talking to myself and I said, top corner and then Man United signs you. So then I'm like, okay. And I look, my, I set myself up properly. I caught smooth top corner and I saw, I was going, I went for the celebration, but very premature because I hit it that well. I thought there was no way. And Tim Howard just went for it. Took it out, he got stuck into the net, but didn't parry it out. You know, he just knocks it in here. And yeah. Costinha, Costinha is, a, is the sniffer dogs. He's yeah. sniff for everything. You take a shot, he runs it, and then you think, where the hell is this guy going? He said, the keeper don't catch it, I tap it in. <laughs> he was the master at those, at those, those tapping goals. Yeah. And then... You know, he, the goalkeeper saved it and I've got my hands in the air and I looked and I was like, oh no. And then boom, <laughs> Costinha. Oh, we forgot we got a, we got the vacuum cleaner in our team. <laughs> and then, yeah, Costinha just cleaned up, my puts it in and then boom. By the time we got to the corner flag and I said, Mourinho is already here in the celebrations. And I'm like, oh my God, wow. He made it on. <laughs> So when, when we knocked them out, when we knocked them out, I think that's when we said, boys, yeah. now we're going to win it. Now we can win yeah. it. So then I said, mister, I think you were right when you said to me when I signed, we're going to win the Champions League because now I believe that yeah. we can win it. 
So wow, that that that's crazy. So then obviously you, you went on, as everyone knows, and get get to the final. You play uh, Monaco in the final. Yeah, we play Mon we play Monaco, and then um, Dale. Dale, the, the striker, he's been injured for nine months. He had a cruise ship and then he came back. So me and him, we played in the semi-final against the yeah. Corunia. And then in the final, so obviously Mourinho comes. So the day before the game, he comes and then, yeah, he was he, he was just a bit, you could see something was, was a bit off. I mean, off, yeah. You know? So then he, he, he makes his announce to the rooms and he comes to my room, myself and Carlos Albertos, the Brazilian striker, we were rooming. So he's, he's there, so we, we're sitting playing PlayStation, you know, yeah. FIFA. Um, and then he goes, he says, how are you guys feeling? You okay? And then he says to Carlos, Carlos, you ready for tomorrow? Oh. You play or you don't play? So Carlos said, hey, mister, like, you know, Brazilians, like, yeah, yeah. Off street stuff. He said, me? I'm playing. <laughs> so then he says, you playing? You make decisions now. He said, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> so then, so now Mourinho looks at me. He says, Benny, you ready for tomorrow? I said, hey, mister, I was born ready. Yeah. You know? Then he says, um, listen, one of you, one of you, because I want to dedicate, you know, because Darley, he's been out for nine months and I think it would be nice for him, you know, that we got to a final and then we give him. So I think I want to pay him up with one of you. So against Depot, it was Darley and, and Benny, yeah. you know. So, so Carlos, I know you're confident and that. And Carlos said, no, mister, no, 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 no. <laughs> Then he played in the semi-final. Then he can sit out for me. So I said, yeah, hey, I'm sitting out. We don't make decisions. Mister must choose. He's the one who picks the team. You yeah. know, he says, no, but, you know, teammates. And then I don't want to because I know both of you guys, you, Benny, Benny got us here, you know. So I don't, I don't want to make that, that kind of decisions. But as a team, I think it would be nice to honor that lay and that. So then he, he says to me, he says to me, and you, Benny? Would you pass? So I said, "Ah, oh, Mister, if you if you want, I if you want, I sit out. I sit out, no problem." Yeah. So then he says, "He says, no, 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 not like that. Like you know, like firm." And I said, "No, nah, I ain't gonna say I don't want to play because yeah, I'll, be, I'll be stupid. I'm not yeah, gonna say." But if, if you choose, you pick the team, and then then he says, "So if I if I was to pick Garley, I said, ah, oh, then I sit on the bench, no problem." Because yeah. listen, I've played every game, every game yeah. up until now. So for me, you know, it's a it's a team effort. Yeah, I, we we all got us ourselves here, and whether I miss out on the final or not, and then another teammate gets to go. As long as we win, it's for yeah. the same cause. So for me, it's no 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 biggie, man. I I can sit out like, you know. So I said, yeah, yeah. It's okay. If 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 you want to play that way, I'll I'll sit out. Yeah, I'll sit out the day of the game. I went to the bath. I went to the toilet, mate. I knocked my head against the wall. I'm like, why in God's name did I say? <laughs> Everybody else is greedy. Everybody else is greedy, and I'm the one who said, "Ah, it's okay." Now I'm crying. I'm watching from the bench, and I and, and that's normally me. So, so yeah. when when the starting lineup came, and then them and the fans, like obviously the the diehard Porto fans.